Hey everyone, so I thought I'd give a little quick video today on one of the relatively quick and easy to make Enochian tools, which is known as the Round Tablet of Nalvaj. So I'll just do a quick video showing what it is and what, the, what it actually says on the tablet. Okay, so this is me just reproducing a lot of what Lon Milo Duquette has in his book. I am going to link to his book because I'm not just going to do a one-for-one -one copy of his book or Aaron Leach's book or anything like that, but I do want to give folks a flavor if you're worried about how difficult some of this is, is to show you, look, this did not take me that long to carve at all. Compared to like the Sigillum de Amoth, this took me, I think I want to say maybe like, other than having trouble on the backside of it, <laughs> uh, I just, this did not take me very long at all. It took me about 20 minutes maybe to carve. 30 minutes, regardless. So you can see, if you look closely, I've used Enochian letters, and I haven't inked this yet. That's because I wound up running out of ink and <laughs> doing this Sigillum de Amoth. But regardless, so let's talk about what these letters are and what they mean. So Lan Mailu Duquette has done a wonderful job with this in his book. So credit where credit is due. And his book is actually relatively cheap right now. You can get it for like three bucks this time right now. I don't know if it's on sale or what, but I'll probably pick up just because it's only three dollars. Um, it's only three dollars, so I'll probably just go ahead and get it because it is an updated version. There are still some typos in there, so if you want to know what they are, just reach out to me. They're they're minor, don't don't freak out or anything like that. But just to let you know, I have found a few. Nobody's perfect, right? This is the problem with publishing, is that um, even even really trying hard to find everything, you almost need somebody with a big old Virgo stellium. Anyway, that's a whole other thing to avoid typos. So, so what is this? This is, Lan Milo Duquette goes into like the actual, you know, this whole idea of continents and stuff like that, but I'm just going to focus in on who Nalvaj was. He's an angel, and his name means Earth Fleer, you know, in other words, flying, trying to get away from Earth. And just as a quick side note, if you actually try to work with Nalvaj, um, be prepared. That is actually one of the more difficult to angels to work with. Not because, you know, of anything wrong with him. His nature, is though, is to flee the earth. So you have to stay in a very um, concentrating posture. You have to yourself almost not be as grounded as you usually do. And then afterwards, get grounded when you're done working with him. But uh, very... You know, otherwise, you know, nothing overly difficult about working with him. But for whatever reason, uh, I'm just, I should just call him LMD, right? Lan Malu Duquette. He talks about how this, what, this angel in particular said, no, really, if we're going to include what should be part of one's ritual temple furniture, that the round tablet of Nalvaj should be one of those. Because, you know, you know, there's sort of like, what can you do to make a workable system? And what, what parts do you include? What do you skip? You know, not everybody has all the money in the world to do all of this. But the wax for this was, was really cheap. This is, the wax for this is under $10. So you can see why I say if you get the one, if you get the initial stuff, you it won't take you too long to get, or too much additional marginal cost to get the pieces of furniture going. Okay, so I've talked that to death. So back to the actual um, words that are on that. So Lan does a great job of showing, you know, the direction that these should be read in. Lua, Lang, Sak, Urk. And these are different kinds of angels. Um, there's angels who serve, administering angels, angels who praise, and then um, I think confounding. Let me check one. Real okay, so the angel classes are praising, ministering, confirming, confounding, okay? And we'll talk about what this is in a second, but suffice it to say that um, these are all basically angel classes that seem to be surrounding the nature of Nalvaj himself, okay? So Nalvaj, strictly speaking, identifies himself with God. So I'll just read off what these are. So this is Lua, Lang, Sak, Urk, those angel classes. Then this one says that Yad, Yadmoz Zir, which is, you know, a phrase in Enochian, but it starts with Yad, which is God. Okay, that's the name for it. It's a parallel to the Hebrew Yah, 
which is yod hey. So then we have again yad, and the Enochian adds a d when they're using that version of God, the God name. So yad bab zina, yad sor gru, yad ser osef. Okay. So I'm just, this is basically taken, taken from Lon's book. I do recommend buying it. It just gets way more into the depth here, but I'm just doing this to show you how to, how to make it. So Yad Mozir, uh, it basic if you translate this and transliterate and just go with the order that the words are in, into English, then you're pretty much going to be okay grammatically speaking. So God's joy I am. So you could probably say like God's joy. And by the way, God, Enochian doesn't always distinguish between the possessive and the regular root noun. So the possessive version of God and of, of Yad is, would be gods. So it could be either Yad could mean God or it could mean gods, the thing that God has, right? So, or owns or whatever. So this could mean a couple of things. It could mean, um, it, it, I'll tell you what it would not mean. It does not mean the joy of God, as in the joy that God himself, and I'm just going to use the masculine version of, of the pronoun here, um, does not mean that, it doesn't mean the, God, the joy of God or a divine joy. That is actually mozod. So D asks, ask the angels at one point, you know, you know, what is mo, what, you know, extended. Well, mo, if, you know, if, if I say, if I say this letter, it's not, zzz, it's zod, you know, if you're actually saying the letter name and then the angels say, yeah, mozod means joy of God, essentially is what that exchange was. So it doesn't mean God's divine joy. It doesn't mean divine joy or, or strictly speaking that the, the exact phrase was joy of God. Instead, it suggests that Nalvaj is identifying himself as the, joy that God has made, let's say, instead of the one he's partaking in. Just a subtle difference, but just be aware of that. God, you know, the joy of God, the jo God's joy is what I am. The, the joy that God has made is what I am. So that's suggesting that he is calling himself that. Now, if you want to know the, the equivalent of I am that I am, I'm trying to remember which Hebrew phrase that is. Uh, uh, hey, yeah, I think it is. Um, then this would be the equivalent of that. And this is actually Jahuachma, okay? So this G is pronounced J, even though it's followed by the letter A, it's Enochian. So things were a little bit looser back then, okay? So I'm making that J phoneme here. <laughs> so it's a Jahuachma, I am that I am, all right? Okay, so that suggests, so at any rate, Yadmozir suggests, you know, I the, the joy that God has made or God's joy is what I am, right? So the second one is Yad Babzina. So Yad, Yad Babzina. So that would suggest, you know, if Bab means power and Zina means motion, then this would be God's power in motion, or perhaps... God's moving power or God's power to move. It's tough, right? It's tough with the translation. In English, we will flip st stuff like that back and forth a lot, okay? So the next one is uh, Yad Sor Guru, and that means God's, or God, you know, God's action deed. So that's kind of a little odd to our ears nowadays, but you could say, you know, you know, I've, I've sinned, you, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. You know, that sort of thing that's said during church. I've sinned against you in, you know, in not only what I say, but what I have done, right? So God's action. So in this case, you know, deed as in a thing that is done, we might consider that to be like a result almost. So that's the way Lon Milo Duquette does this. I would probably translate this more as something like God's action creating deeds in the hearts of people, right? Things that we actually wind up doing. So thanks to God's, you know, whatever. So something along those lines. This is where it gets difficult, right? So that is basically God's action is the deed that I do. He stirs me, Nalvaj, <laughs> to, he, he acts upon me and then I do, 
right? It could mean exactly that, right? So then finally we have Yad Sero Seth, which is interesting. So if God laments, then I am, you know, maybe God's lamentation creating discord, right? Now, why would that be, right? Well, if God is lamenting something, he's going to try to undo something, and undoing something would be like a kind of discord. You know, that's just an example, right? And I'm going to pause really briefly here to just make sure I have the rest of what Duke had had to say on this, because he's he's a thoughtful. Okay, guy. so take two on this one, on this part. <laughs> so so anyway, looking at what Lon wrote, he suggested that this last phrase might mean God's lamentation and discord, which would also suggest that Yad Sor grew would mean God's action and deeds, or it could mean his activity and deeds, depending on how the translation would go back then. And I don't, I'm not gonna like school myself in Latin really quickly, I do suggest that if you want to get a better sense of this, you do pick up Lon's book. But I did want to mention that, so we have four kind of facets here, an additional four kinds of angels, of, of, you know, that he, that seemed to surround him and his energy. So I mentioned those four classes of angels, but we have God's joy, you know, and praising angels would kind of seem to go, hey, hey you know, joy of God, let's praise because we're all happy on account of God. Um, we have the ministering angels, God's power in motion, right, or moving power, or more specifically, we have God's um, action and deeds. So you could, there's an argument to be made that which class of angels goes with which. God's, so God's power in motion, um, which would seem most to go with, uh, you know, the, the, the ministering angels, I'm going to do things and exercise power, a minister literally exercises power. Um, then we have uh, God's action and deeds. So the Yadsor grew, which is, okay, now I am going to, um, I'm going to be confirming this through my action. Not only do I have the power to say such and such, I'm going to confirm and do not just, you know, exercise the power of thought or of word, but now this is actually deed. And then finally, we have the confounding angels, which come up with respect to, which do seem to parallel lamentation and discord, discord in particular with, with confounding. And, okay, so why even have that? Why have a set of angels who confounds and is associated with lamentation? Well, I think there, the answer is twofold. One, I think, you know, we have angels dealing with humanity, and we are error-prone, right? And if we make a mistake, you know, we can regret that. Now, there's an opportunity behind the mistake, right? But it's like, you do need to have that little, okay, that little oops moment, right? And lamentation is not just that. It is far heavier than that. But you look at the state of humanity, you know, you don't need to go very far with a certain train of thought and saying, okay, we make this mistake and we make that mistake. So, so anyway, and then the question is, how do we resolve that mistake? And that is that idea of discord, right? You know, I'm going to, you know, and I am on the server discord, but you know, the, the state of discord disagreement, right? And there's disagreement be and, you know, there's lamentation associated with that. I'm not getting what I want, or this other person is, or worse, you know, what did the, you know, let's say somebody passes away, who did the, who was this person? And different points of view on that, because we're all approaching that from our own perspective. And then how do we move forward? Then we need to figure that out. And we need to make some kind of, we need to go from discord to back to harmony again, to concord, to agreement, right? But at first, in order to need to come to an agreement, there must first be disagreement, right? Why do we improve? You know, we improve because we do not accept enough of the status quo. We do not accept things as they are. Instead, we work to make sure that they get better. We, and whether or not that just means up to date, right? Like, okay, I'm going to update my software because this is less efficient. This is now prone to threats that didn't exist before, et cetera, et cetera. So, and it, this is a, a kind of a profound point here that I want to make, but like God suffers, 
Okay, and this is just, this is the insight that I, that God showed me um, in 21. He suffers. And the thing to keep in mind is that, like, first of all, it's like, like, that's mind, that should be mind blowing in and of itself in the sense that, and that you don't get, you don't get, you don't get this during your usual, you know, Sunday sermons, but, or, you know, Saturday, whenever you happen to worship, um, you don't usually hear that because if you really think about it, that is a cosmic level of suffering, right? And that's not fun. <laughs> Nobody likes to think about that. Uh, and I was having a talk with somebody today about Christ and his suffering is very much kind of like this microcosm of the suffering of the divine. And so Christ's divinity, you know, Christ is both human and divine. And both of those, by the way, should be honored. I think it was Chocolat where, you know, there was that question about, you know, are we going to always talk about Christ's divinity or his, his humanity too? And both need to be honored. But hello, my cat's coming into star. Okay, might be 20 minutes. Come here. Anyhow, so, so bearing this in mind that there's some divine level suffering, in addition to a divine attempt to improve and lift us up and really trying to be, to honor, to honor all, God trying to honor all of his parts as well as his wholeness. <laughs> The cat is suffering a little bit. She wants me to move. I'll move in a bit. <laughs> um, so just bear that in mind that that the exercise, you know, there's that phrase power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that basically is just saying, you know, you're if you're if you're one person, if you're the, if you're this part of the whole and you think that it all if you think that you're the your view, your one lifetime's worth of experience and knowledge and training is enough to be able to understand everybody, that's going to be corrupting. And if you think you've spent enough time to get rid of, to exorcise your demons, then chances are, I mean, let's hope so, right? I mean, that's what we spend our lifetime of spirituality trying to do. Anyway point is, is that God is also dealing with a real attempt. Then this is my sense. I'm just, I'm not saying, you know, I'll probably do another video on, on God after this, but I just wanted to start the conversation of saying, you know, this is hard. This is hard at a divine level for God. So, you know, just bear that in mind. And part of the reason why I say that you know, why I'm big into, into pantheism and panentheism is that your own suffering is also God's suffering. So don't think that he doesn't understand because if you are part of the whole then every single individual's experience is part of that whole, right? So you are understood, okay? Your, your, your struggles are there and they're real, not only to you, but also to God. So that's just something to bear in mind. You know, so why, why is there a reference to God's lamentation and discord? Because God is trying to get us all on the same page and he's having to deal with the suffering of us not quite getting there yet. So take the steps to, you know, work on yourself, be kind to others, patient with others, because you don't know what else somebody else is going else is going through, but God knows both of you and them. Okay. So, okay. So round tablet of Nalvaj, just to wrap up, big points. Simple to make. Just melt some wax in a nice four inch uh, tin, baking tin. Make sure it's got a nice 90 degree angle, unlike the other stuff that I bought. Um, and then set it outside and when it's a little cooler at night and the wax will shrink up enough, it'll be easier to just, you know, whack, the, <laughs> turn it upside down and whack the, um, you know, whack it against the ground or the, or the floor or whatever. And it should just pop out. Not, 
necessarily right away, but it might get enough to that you can just wiggle it free. So that's simple to do. Carving it does not take that long. And the lawn states in his experience, he had a bad time, but um, that it was that that, that Nalvaj apparently wanted to be known. So I'm guessing that there's some higher level Enochian stuff. And that's been my experience. It's it's a hard energy to ground in my experience. Maybe not for you, but it's also worth it. The sense that I got when I was working with him is it was like, okay, great. You know, now we can kind of pick up some of these loose threads. So, okay, probably pushing it probably a little over 20 minutes, but not too much. All right. Love you all. Bye.